All right, this is your targets one and two homework assignment. Um, we're graphing radical functions. We're focusing on the square root functions or functions to the one half power. Um, and we went over what the parent function looks like in the notes. Um, if you don't recall, go back and watch that video. I'll copy down the uh, parent table here though, so we can work with that. Um, but let's look at target one. We'll also find the domain and range in the zeros of these graphs. So I'm going to copy down that parent table off to the left here. Parent table. So it was an XY chart and the X values were all positive numbers, you know, from zero to 10 that were perfect squares that I could easily take the square root of. So like zero, one, four, and nine. The y values were then the square roots of those numbers. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. OK, so then our next step is to look at what transformations are going on within this function. Well, if you notice, I have an x minus 3 within the radical. And everything inside the radical always affects our x values. Everything outside the radical affects our y values. So because I have x minus 3, and because I know that whatever is inside lies, I'm always going to do the opposite of whatever it says on the inside of the radical or the parentheses or the square root, whatever. I'm actually going to take my x values and add 3. I'm do the opposite of whatever it says. So creating my new table, I'm adding 3 to all those original x values. And I get 3, 4, 7, 12. I added 3 to all my original x values. Now, what's going on with my y's? Well, I have a plus 2 outside of my radical, meaning I'm going to add 2 to all of my original y values. So it becomes 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, I'm going to go ahead and graph these new points now. I have 3, 2, 4, 3, 7, 4, and then 12, 5 would be somewhere over there connecting those dots look something like that and then my domain and range let's look at that so the domain don't forget always has to do with our x values and our range has to do with our y values so what x value am i starting at with my first point well the x value is positive three and i have every x value greater than that so my domain is x is greater than or equal to three Looking at my range now, what y value am I starting at? I'm starting at positive 2, and I'm getting bigger than that. So I'm saying that my range is y is greater than or equal to positive 2. Zeros. Is my graph crossing the x-axis anywhere? No. So I have none zeros. I have zero zeros. OK, let's look at number 2 f of x equals the square root of x plus 3 minus 1. So what's going on here? I'm going to create my new xy chart. What am I doing to my x values? Well, I have an x plus 3 on the inside of there, meaning I'm going to subtract 3, always to the opposite, from all of my original x values. So I have 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 4 minus 3 is 1. 9 minus 3 is 6. And what's happening to our y's? Well, I'm subtracting 1 from all of my original y values. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Now I'll graph these. So let's see. It's negative 3, negative 1 is over here. Negative 2, 0. 1, 1 and 6, 2. Here's my graph. If I were to keep going, I would get more values to the right, but I only need my four points there. All right, domain. What x value am I starting at? Well, I'm starting at the x value of negative 3, and I'm getting bigger. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And then my range, let's see, what y value am I starting at? actually negative 1. So my range should be y is greater than or equal to negative 1. 
it's including negative 1 and every y value bigger than that. Zeros. Where is my graph crossing the x-axis? If you notice on your new table, it will tell you if it's crossing at a good point there. And I'm actually crossing at x equals negative 2. That's all you need to write, the value of x that it's crossing at. That would also be the point on negative 2 comma 0. But yeah, x equals negative 2 would be the 0 there. Moving down to number three and four. Um, my parent table is up above. I can rewrite it again though here. Zero, one, four, nine. Zero, one, two, three. All right, and I'm gonna make a new table for three and a new table for four. All right, let's look at number three. What's happening to my x values? Oof, I actually have an x minus one half in my radical there. That actually means I'm going to add 0.5 or one half to all of my x values, original x values, so these over here. And I'm gonna write those like this. You can either say one half or you can say 0.5. One plus a half is 1.5 or one and a half. 4 plus a half is 4.5 or 4.5, and, and then 9 plus 1 half is 9.5 or 9.5. On the outside, I have a plus 1, so I'm going to add 1 to all of my original y values. I get 1, 2, 3, and 4 when I add 1. Let's graph those. Over 1 half up 1 is about right there. Over 1 and a half up 2 over four and a half up three, over nine and a half up four. Right, here is my graph. And my domain now. What x value am I starting at? I'm actually starting at 0.5. So my domain has to be x is greater than or equal to positive one half or positive 0.5. So I'm saying what x value is the very first point at, and then I'm including every value bigger than that. My range, what y value am I starting at with my first point? It's at positive 1, so y has to be bigger than or equal to positive 1. Is my graph crossing the x-axis anywhere? Not that I can see, and it will never come back down, so I have none zeros. I have no zeros. And finally, number four. What's going on with my x values? Am I doing any transformations there? I'm, I have an x plus seven, meaning I'm gonna subtract seven from all of my x values. So, zero minus seven gives me negative seven. One minus seven gives me negative six. Four minus seven gives me negative three. Nine minus seven gives me two. And my y's. I have a plus 3 at the end, meaning I'm going to add 3 to all of my original y values. So I get 0 plus 3 is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 3 is 6. Now I can graph these new points. Negative 7, 3. Negative 6, 4. Negative 3, 5. And 2 comma 6. And there we go. Domain, what x value am I starting at? You don't have to draw these lines that I'm doing, but it helps me. I'm starting at the x value of negative 7, and I'm getting bigger than that. So I include every x value bigger than or equal to negative 7. My range, what y value am I starting at? Positive 3. So I include every y value bigger than or equal to positive 3. And last but not least, is my graph crossing the x-axis anywhere? Don't forget the x-axis is right here. I'm not crossing it, so I have none. And it will never come back down to cross it. It will never cross it, so no x zeros there, no zeros. All right, and that is your homework. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask one of the Algebra 2 teachers.